بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ناظرین نگل کے ساتھ میں ہوں موزم شہباز لاسٹ ویک ہم نے آپ کی ملاقات کروائی یو کے یونیورسٹیز کے ریپرزنٹیو سے اور آج اسی سلسلے میں ہماری اس کی سیکنڈ ایپیسوڈ ہے اگین ہم آپ کی ملاقات کروائیں گے یو کے یونیورسٹیز کے ریپرزنٹیو سے لیکن اس سے پہلے ہم جانیں گے طوبہ اقبال سے جو کہ مینیجر انٹرنیشنل ایجوکیشن سروسز ہیں برٹش کونسل میں کہ برٹش کونسل کیا کام کر رہی ہے پاکستان میں ایجوکیشن کے حوالے سے انٹرنیشنل ایجوکیشن کے حوالے سے اور ان کا یہ جو ٹور ہے اسٹڈی یو کے اس یہ کیسا رہا اس ایگزیبیشن میں کیا رسپانس رہا جو یو کے یونیورسٹیز کے ریپرزنٹیو تھے ان کا ایکسپیرئنس کیسا رہا تو ویلکم ٹو دا شو برٹش کونسل کے بارے میں بتائیے برٹش کونسل کیا کام کر رہی ہے ایجوکیشن میں انٹرنیشنل ایجوکیشن کے حوالے سے برٹش کونسل کی ہسٹری بہت لمبی ہے اٹس بن مور دین سیونٹی ایئرس دیٹ دس آرگنائزیشن ہیز بین پریزنٹ ان پاکستان پرائمرلی ہمارا جو رول ہے وہ کلچرل ایکسچینج کے حوالے سے رہتا ہے جس میں مختلف اسٹرینڈس ہیں ون آف دا کی اسٹرینڈس فار دیٹ ہیز بین ایجوکیشن بہت فوکس رہا ہے برٹش کونسل کا فار دا پاس مینی ایئرس کے اس کے مختلف ایسپیکٹس کو ہم کور کرتے ہیں اس میں اسکولس بھی شامل ہیں ہائر ایجوکیشن شامل ہے اسی کا ونگ ہے انٹرنیشنل ایجوکیشن سروسز ایکسٹرنلی ہم اس کو اسٹڈی یو کے کے نام سے جاتے ہیں اور اس ڈپارٹمنٹ کا پرائمری فوکس یہی رہتا ہے کہ یو کے یونیورسٹیز کو ہم کنیکٹ کرا سکے پاکستانی اسٹوڈنٹ سے اس کے ویریئس ہمارے پاس یو نو تھرو آؤٹ دا ایئر وی رن لائک ملٹیپل کیلنڈر ایکٹیویٹیز دا موسٹ امپورٹنٹ ایکٹیویٹی دیٹ وی رن فار دس پرپز از دی ایگزیبیشن ٹور دیٹ یو بین یو نو سو کائنڈلی کورنگ اس سال ہمارا ایگزیبیشن ٹور میں سب سے لارجسٹ کوہرٹ آپ کہہ سکتے ہیں یو کے یونیورسٹیز کا ہمارے ساتھ موجود تھا ٹوینٹی سکس یو کے یونیورسٹیز پرزنٹ اینڈ وی کور تھری میجر سٹیز جس میں کراچی لاہور اسلام آباد شامل ہے and it's been a fantastic success i think uh, for us it's been a landmark because jitne hum har saal expect karte hain students se usse taqreeban double the footfall was there to present so there's some something that we're doing right i think uh, that has you know resulted in this the british council ke higher education commission ke sath bhi badi close ties hain aap usme kaam karte hain ji uh, so i think british council uh, like i said ke cultural exchange ke andar hamara ek bahut important wing hai that's education yeah. sector اس کے لیے ہر اسٹیک ہولڈر ویٹر اٹ از یو کے پارٹنر یا انٹرنل اسٹیک ہولڈر ہائر ایجوکیشن کمیشن جیسے آپ نے مینشن کیا یا لوکل پارٹنر انسٹیٹیوشنس ہوتے ہیں لوکل اسکولس نیٹ ورک ہیں وہ تمام انسٹیٹیوشنس ہمارے ساتھ کسی نہ کسی طرح سے جڑے ہوئے ہیں اس کی ایک سب سے بڑی عکاسی ہمارا پاک کیو کے ایجوکیشن گیٹ وے کا جو ایم او یو سائن ہوا ہے یا جس جس پارٹنرشپ میں ہم ایچ ای سی کے ساتھ کر رہے ہیں تھنک از ون آف دا بگیسٹ پلیٹ فارمس دیٹ وی ہیو کریٹیڈ فار ہائر ایجوکیشن اس کے اندر مختلف تھیماٹک بینڈس ہیں جس کے اندر کوالٹی اشورنس ایچ ای کی لیڈرشپ کو ڈیولپ کرنا آپ کی اسکالرشپ اسٹوڈنٹ ایکسچینج آل آف دیٹ از پارٹ آف اٹ اینڈ آئی تھنک ایٹ دی اینڈ آف دا ڈے واٹ وی ریئلی فوکسنگ از آن کریٹنگ اپرچونیٹیز فار یگ پیپل اینڈ اوبیسلی بی آن um um the younger generation everybody who's associated with education we're trying to create opportunities for them to the british council bahut se hamare education leaders jo hain vice chancellors principals unko bhi uk leke gaye wahan training development mein kaam kiya to wo kitni had tak successful raha i think it's one of our most successful projects agar hum ek rough estimate lagaye almost 99% aapki jo higher education ki leadership hai who they've been associated with british council in this leadership platform in some way or the other uh, regularly hamare inward missions and tours jaate jaate hain there's a particular leadership discourse that we uh, ta- uh, you know lead on us hawale se bhi i think almost 99% of the vice chancellors of the higher education leadership in pakistan unhone is program se benefit kiya hai they've gone to the uk they've implemented those changes and it's a continuous process um hum har exhibition har uh, initiative se i think what we're trying to achieve is collaboration partnerships ab ye research partnerships ho ye student exchange ki partnership ho scholarships ki partnership ho Um, all these avenues have been a product of, uh, you know, whatever we should have been. Scholarships are a big attraction for Pakistan. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, hum log yehi, uh, you know, when we're doing this exhibition throughout, I think it's a very important question that comes in. کہ اسکالرشپس کے حوالے سے کافی سوال بھی ہوتے ہیں پیرنٹس کے لیے بھی ہوتے ہیں آئی تھنک فار پاکستانی اسٹوڈنٹس یہ نہ صرف ان کو ایجوکیشن حاصل کرنے کے لیے ایک ذریعہ بنتا ہے اسکالرشپس ہونا بٹ اٹس آلسو بیکاز اٹس اٹس اے میٹر آف پریسٹیج اینڈ اٹس ریئلی سیلیبریٹیڈ اکراس اینڈ بوتھ فار دا فیملی فار دا چائلڈ اٹس این امپورٹنٹ کانورزیشن ٹو ہیو آئی تھنک جس جتنا یہ ایکسچینج جتنی انسائٹ یو کے یونیورسٹیز کو پہنچیں گی جتنے لوگ ان چیزوں کو اٹینڈ کریں گے اگر ہماری ہائر ایجوکیشن کمیشن ہے 
یا جتنا بھی ہم پروگرامز اس سے رن کریں ہم یہی انکاریج کرتے ہیں معظم کہ آپ یو نو یو شوڈ اٹینڈ دیز یو شوڈ کم ٹو دیز ایگزیبیشن جب یہ ہوئے بھی تھے ایگزیبیشن سو وی انکاریج آل آر نیٹ ورکس ٹو بی پارٹ آف اٹ کیونکہ اس سے یہ ہوتا ہے کہ ہمارا جو نیریٹو ہے جو چیزیں ہمارے لیے میٹر کرتے ہیں ویدر اٹ از اسکالر شپ ویدر اٹ پوسٹ یو نو ون آؤٹ کم آف اٹ دیر آئی کین مینشن از دا پوسٹ اسٹڈی ورک ویزا ایگزیکٹلی یس سو آئی ایم شیور یو ہرڈ آف اٹ کہ اب انٹرنیشنل اسٹوڈنٹس کے لیے آپشن موجود ہے کہ وہ پوسٹ اسٹڈی ورک ویزا کے لیے اپلائی کر سکتے ہیں ان دا یو کے آفٹر دیو کمپلیٹڈ ڈگری اینڈ دس آل آئی تھنک از اے پارٹ ون ایور دیر انٹر ایکٹنگ ون ایور دے ٹیکنگ بیک کہ ہمارے لیے کیا ضروری ہے پاکستانی بچے کیا چاہتے ہیں اپنی ہائر ایجوکیشن آپشنس میں ویدر یو نو لائک ایسے اٹس اسکالر شپس اور ویدر اٹ از یو اپرچونیٹی ٹو ورک دیر اٹس آل پاسبل اگر وہ اپنی انٹریکشنس کریں دے کم دے میٹ اینی آپشن دیٹ دے گیٹ ٹو میٹ ود دیز ریپرزینٹیو اٹس ویری امپورٹنٹ اینڈ آئی تھنک آر ریپرزینٹیو از آلسو انجوائے دس ہمارے ایگزیبیشن ٹور پہ ایوری پیرنٹ ایوری چائلڈ Uh, every school leader that mm-hmm. they've met, um, I think it's been important for them to take back and it's important for them mm-hmm. to gain insight into the Pakistani market. So post-study work, do you think that you got the exhibition and overall uh, Definitely. trend Definitely, I hoga. think it's, it's a very important our breakthrough. Raha hai. Uh, it has mm-hmm. not been easy. Uh, ye kafi saalon baad dubara, exactly. ye cheez post, post-study work visa is now available and it's an option for young people uh, to explore. And the best part is that um, چاہے آپ واپس آ رہے ہوں یا چاہے آپ دنیا میں کہیں بھی جا رہے ہوں اگر آپ نے یو کے ہائر ایجوکیشن ڈگری لی ہے اور اس کے ساتھ آپ کے پاس تقریباً ایک دو سال کا پریکٹیکل ایکسپیرینس ہے اس دیٹ ویلیو دیٹ یو جنریٹ فرام دیٹ اٹ از ایپلیکیبل ٹو ادھر یو نو بوتھ ان پاکستان اینڈ اینی ویئر اکراس دا ورلڈ سو آئی تھنک دیٹس ویری امپورٹنٹ اٹس این امپورٹنٹ بریک تھرو بچوں کے لیے یہ سمجھنا بہت ضروری ہے کہ ان کی پریکٹیکل ایکسپوجر ان کا ورک ایکسپیرینس جو اسکل وہ اسکل سیٹ وہ جو گین کریں گے اگر کسی بھی یو نو پرٹیکولرلی ان انوائرمنٹ لائک دا یو کے اگر وہاں کام کرتے ہیں ان کے پاس جو ریسرچ کی فیسلٹیز ہیں جو ایڈوانسمنٹ ان ٹرمس آف ورک انوائرمنٹ اینڈ بوتھ یو نو یور ایجوکیشن از اویلیبل آئی تھنک اٹس اٹس سم تھنگ دیٹ ول یو نو بینیفٹ دم فار لائف تو یو کے یونیورسٹیز اینڈ پاکی یونیورسٹی پاکستانی یونیورسٹیز یونیورسٹی ٹو یونیورسٹی کلیبریشن بھی کچھ ہوئی ہیں جی ڈیفینیٹلی لائک آئی مینشن دا پاک یو کے ایجوکیشن گیٹ پہ اس کا ایک بہت امپورٹنٹ اسٹرینڈ پارٹنرشپس اینڈ ریسرچ کا ہے اینڈ وین یو کے یونیورسٹی از آلسو وزٹ ہیئر ہمارے ایگزیبیشن میں بھی جب ان کی ملاقات ہوتی ہے سو وی ٹرائی اینڈ انشور کہ ان کا ایکسیس رہے یونیورسٹی سے لیڈنگ انسٹیٹیوشن سے ویدر اٹ از وایا کیمپس وزٹس یا ہم ان کو اپنے ایگزیبیشنس پہ انوائٹ کرتے ہیں تاکہ کوئی بھی پاسبلٹی کوئی بھی ان فیوچر دیٹ دے اینی آپشن دیٹ دے وانٹ ٹو ایکسپلور ویدر اٹ از فار پارٹنرشپس ویدر اٹ از ورکنگ ٹوگیدر ایکیڈیمک ایکسچینج بہت ضروری ہے فیکلٹی کی ڈیولپمنٹ از ایز امپورٹنٹ ایز اسٹوڈنٹس ڈیولپمنٹ ایگزیکٹلی تو آل دیز آپشنس آر سم تھنگ دیٹ بی فیسلیٹیٹ ایٹ دا برٹش کاؤنسل جسٹ ٹو میک شیور دیٹ دیٹ اٹ شوڈ بی شارٹ ٹرم ہم نہیں چاہتے کہ یو نو ہم نے دس بارہ دن آف دس ایگزیبیشن دیٹس ناٹ دا اونلی تھنگ دیٹ وی فوکسنگ آن آئی تھنک ہم لوگ فوکس کرتے ہیں کہ اگلے پانچ دس بارہ سال میں ہم کس طرح سے کانٹریبیوٹ کر سکتے ہیں ہائر ایجوکیشن اینڈ ایجوکیشن کی امپروومنٹ میں تھینک یو تو بفور یو ٹائم لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین اسٹے ٹیون اٹس ٹائم فار بریک بٹ آفٹر بریک وی آر گوئنگ ٹو میک یو میٹ ود ریپرزینٹیو آف یو کے یونیورسٹیز ویلکم بیک لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین یو ہیو heard uh, Tuba speaking on the behalf of British Council. He has explained uh, what are the services British Council is offering in Pakistan and how it is uh, serving education. Uh, now we have a re- official representative of four UK universities. They are here visiting Pakistan. They have been to three cities. They had uh, interaction with thousands of students. They have explained them what are the opportunities for them when they come to UK for the studies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first I'll introduce my panel. We have Mr. Harish. He is regional manager uh, for the University of Edinburgh. Then we have Ms. Elthia. She is senior international officer, University of Glasgow. Then we have Ms. Grace. She is regional manager for South Asia, University of York. Then we have Mr. Hatim Kadir, Pakistan regional uh, advisor, University of Portsmouth. Welcome everyone to the show. Harish, starting with you, how has been your experience visiting Pakistan? Is it your first time? Um, no, so this is actually my fifth time here visiting Pakistan, fifth time visiting Lahore, third time part- participating in the British Council Pakistan Study UK exhibitions. So it's been a great turnout across all three cities, Karachi, Islamabad, and finally Lahore. Um, again, always welcoming each city. The Pakistan hospitality extends very well to all the delegates here. So um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure to have been here. 
Iltia, your experience? Yeah, so this is my second visit to Pakistan. Second visit, yeah. um, last year I visited Karachi, Islamabad and Lahore. This year I am just visiting Islamabad and Lahore. Okay. Um, but as with last year, um, it's been a really positive experience and it's so encouraging to see so many students looking to study in the UK. And how has been experienced participating in the ex exhibition? They've been great. Um, the quality of the students who have been coming to speak to us um, has been really, really good. Um, students have a really good idea of what they want to do. They're yeah. very ambitious um, and it's just really nice to see. Harish, how many students you have interacted with? Have you counted? So the <laughs> multiple uh, range of students seeking undergraduate study and postgraduate study, even those pursuing further research as well, have kind of come in hundreds of attendance across the three cities here. So um, it's been interesting to see a bright they're interested in a variety of courses, not just in the typical courses mm. that usually attract Pakistani students, which go from engineering to law mm. to business administration. It's been interesting to see some, some interest in other liberal arts courses, such as literature, um, also economics as well that has come through. And which type of curious you have got? Yeah, so similar. Um, I guess the University of Glasgow and Edinburgh offer quite a similar portfolio. Um, so we also have been asked about the full range of programmes, um, engineering so and it business. It might have been difficult for the students to choose between two. <laughs> yes, yes, it can be, it can be. Um, students often consider both. Right, Grace, uh, so you your first time visiting Pakistan? Yeah, this is my first time. Okay, I've been in Karachi and Lahore um, and I absolutely love it. It's been amazing. The food especially has been great um, and it's been really good to be um, participating in the British Council Fairs and just to echo what um, my colleagues have said that um, the students have been really excited about the prospect of studying in the UK um, mm. so it's been great to meet those students and answer their questions. So have you been on the streets? Have you uh, uh, tried desi food? Not, not really street not food, no, um, mainly just in restaurants, um, but maybe next time. I hope to be back soon. And Hatim, I think I should ask you how many times you have visited UK? <laughs> um, to be fair, uh, I have come from a different market. I used to work for the Australian market. Uh -huh. So I uh, haven't been to the UK. I've just started with this university. Okay. Uh, I'm very happy about it. Uh, I am from Pakistan. Uh, I've done a couple of events before, but uh, the British Council is the first of its kind that I've done. And uh, it has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've had a full house in all cities that we've been in and uh, responses have been too, too good, better than we, what we expected. Mm. Rish, UK has been a, a popular destination for Pakistan students and from students from other parts of the world mm -hmm. as well. What do you think, what are the factors, like it's the ranking, it's the legacy, it's the history? I think that's a very good question. I think it's a combination of multiple factors and speaking specifically for the University of Edinburgh and the University of Glasgow and all the universities here, particularly for our two universities in Scotland, we are particularly the traditional ancient universities. We've got over combined over 600 years of higher education history attached to that. So that tradition um, is one factor. The second is the ranking. Both of us are highly well ranked in the QS rankings. Edinburgh is currently 18th in the world under the current QS rankings. Um, again, that really adds to kind of mm. help contribute to the choice a student, Pakist student from Pakistan makes, helps influence their decision. Um, we know rankings are very of particular importance, so it does give it some focus to where they want to go and where they want to study. Mm. Um, I think also, I mean, Scotland's tagline is Scotland um, welcomes the world, and it really does do that. Both of our universities are not just highly reputed, rep reputed but also internationally diverse. Um, in our student intake, we both kind of welcome a range of nationalities. Um, Scotland, specifically for us at the University of Edinburgh, we represent 156 different nationalities. So just under 50% of our student intake is international, um, with just over 100 students from Pakistan and similar figures for the University of Glasgow as well. So I think that international diversity really helps enrich a student experience, and that is equally probably a primary factor mm. um, for not just students from Pakistan, but like you said, from other parts of the world. Um, making their decision to choose a UK university as well. That's the same question. Why UK? <laughs> so I think that you know there are obviously historic links between um, Pakistan and the United Kingdom. Mm. Um, I guess a lot of the major cities in the UK do have a large Pakistani diaspora and for students who are considering coming from Pakistan having that comfort of knowing that there's you know, perhaps family members There's who, have, who there, live yeah. in the UK um, and even at the university level. Um, I've spoken to a number of students who, you know, an uncle studies at the University of Glasgow 
or you know they've travelled to Glasgow because somebody was living in some other part of the UK. And I think that degree of familiarity um, is really is really good for the students. Grace. I completely agree with um, what has been said about the historic links between Pakistan and the UK mm. and that famili familiarity as well is really important to students when they're thinking about um, where they might like to study abroad. But I think what the UK really offers is a world-recognised high-quality education. And that's not just important mm. for thinking about the studies themselves, um, but also thinking about your life and prospects after you've graduated. Um, the UK brand really for the universities means that students when they graduate and go and want to go into any sector, any line of work, employers will recognise that they've received a high quality education and I think that is one of the main pools um, to why students want to study in the UK. Atim, what do you think? Kya factor ho sakte hai? Pakistani students ke liye from the other part of the world as well? Because in addition to what uh, my colleagues just said, um, ek, jab Pakistani student uh, jata hai padne, so, in some factors, ke alawa, ek return on investment. Bhi hota. Mm. To, main ho international student. Raha hu. So, uh, other than the fact that you have a place that you can call home, where your quality of life is uh, students tend to work also, most of them. Ek ye facility you have to have. But then, you have to be forward looking. You have to be sure that once you're done, you get uh, the you know, return on investment that you expected. So, um, um, in, in an overall package, it's a very good place to be. But just in a case, we have to go to the base, we have to settle down, we have to community ka part, banna, uh, finding similarities in friends, people. Uh, mm -hmm. Many of them have family there. So, ye ek, uh, in, in all aspects, I have to say that it's a study destination hai, uh, with, which fulfills all your requirements. And Harish, uh, it is also like uh, if we compare UK education system with the other education systems of the world. Uh, while other education systems, they offer breadth in the undergraduate uh, studies. But in UK, it's the depth. You study less number of subjects, but they are more focused. So do you think it provides uh, you know, uh, students with an opportunity to master one skill set? I think, um, well, I'm, I'll touch on specifically for Scotland, for us, because um, you mentioned about that breadth. Um, uh, that actually do, that is actually inherent in the Scottish education system. Mm -hmm. um, the flexibility and choice is something um, both our universities and the rest of the 17 other Scottish universities really encourage that flexibility and choice. So this combination of a major and minor system mm -hmm. um, does specifically exist in the Scottish system okay. to allow students to really make the degree what they want to make it within reason um, based on the portfolio of degree programmes we offer. And that really helps him for when someone who is, or well, a Pakistani student who is 16 or 17, they may be not certain of, of the particular routes they want to go on. Um, studying in Scotland really helps kind of inform that decision because they can take maybe a major within economics, mm. but they could maybe also minor in a physics class or study a language if they wanted to. And it kind of helps kind of them master several skills. It, get, it helps diversify their skill set. Um, so both of us as traditional ancient <coughs> universities kind of have, and as part of the Scottish system, have kind of set that model up um, so as an alternative, I suppose, to the US, which we know is also an attractive option for Pakistani students, but um, that similar model is, is replicated and started from Scotland specifically. So I think if you look at the UK education system overall, whereas in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, that's a three-year offering that's there. So that specialism you mentioned does come through there, and that depth definitely does come through. Um, in Scotland, that would come through from the third year. Um, because they have learnt, kind of been able to kind of then decide what, where they would like to hone their skill set. It's a new thing for me because I, you know, so I think it's, I think it, this is, it's the yeah, same yeah, system. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's exactly the same system. Um, exactly what that will look like varies between the universities. You mm. may find that some universities in Scotland offer specialisms within business and management, for example, from level one. Um, whereas others won't. Um, so, so the specifics of this can, can vary across institutions. Um, but the premise is the same, that in the, in the first two years of the programme, there is flexibility and students can take multiple subjects um, and basically they can change their mind if, if their initial choice doesn't so turn out to be three years degree good. in Scotland. It's a four year. Four year degree. Four year. Okay. So I'm coming, you know, I'm getting all the information. So it's uh, like uh, whether you have done intermediate from Pakistan or A-levels, so uh, you have to study four years, is it? 
Um, we, we accept A-levels um, for entry to the four-year programme. Um, most of us also will have a foundation um, programme that we offer for students who are coming straight from um, the Pakistani education mm. system. Um, but for us, um, a student, if they complete the foundation year, they would actually have direct entry to level two. Mm. So it doesn't take any additional time. So okay. in the rest of the UK, you would have foundation and then year one, two and three. Whereas in the Scottish system, you would have foundation and then direct entry to year two, three, four. So it is the same. Right. So Grace, uh, what is your take on this system? And so I think this what is, is the system uh, which is followed in your university? I think this is one of the real sort of advantages of the UK system in, mm. in that there is that so much variety exactly. between the yeah. Scottish system and also the rest of the United Kingdom in England, yeah. Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, I think really it comes down to the individual student and what they think would be the best fit for them. Um, so if a student knows they have a particular passion for a subject and they want to really study that in depth and from day one, then a university degree in, say, England, Wales and Northern Ireland might be a good fit for them in that they're able to really follow that particular subject path in depth. If they're very clear about what they want to do. Exactly. But even within the system in the rest of the UK, there is still some inbuilt flexibility, which is why I think it's so important for students to really look at the course content. Some university degrees will offer some inbuilt flexibility, where, for instance, you might be able to study a module from a related subject that's not in your particular degree specialism. Mm. There's also some opportunities as well to study joint honours programmes, where you could do an equal taught between two subjects. So, for instance, you could combine politics with economics, for instance. So I think, again, this is one of the real advantages of the UK system in that there is such variety and choice for students to really follow a degree path that works for them. Mm. So, Adim, what do you think, uh, Pakistani student, uh, just, uh, I wasn't aware that there are like different systems within the UK. Mm -hmm. So, uh, students, ke mein, how they can become aware of this? Unke kya kya options and what is the best match for them? Look, um, as they have told us that different universities have different facilities in mm. uh, the combination studies that they have told us 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 that they ठीक है उसमें हम कोशिश करते हैं कि जो पहला दो, दो साल होते हैं उसमें स्टूडेंट अपना कोर्स वर्क करता है जो तीसरा साल है उसके अंदर स्टूडेंट अपनी कंप्लीट ईयर की प्लेसमेंट करता है वो डेडिकेटेड होता है आ, उसी फील्ड में जिसमें वो डिग्री परसू कर रहे होते हैं और वो एक साल की प्लेसमेंट के बाद उसको खत्म करने के बाद अपना लास्ट ईयर करते हैं तो उसे होता ही है कि मार्केट में एंटर होने से पहले वर्कफोर्स का हिस्सा बनने से पहले यू गेट अ टेस्ट ऑफ व्हाट्स व्हाट्स गोइंग टू कम इन द फ्यूचर in this case, there is no program for those who have Universities put a lot of practical stress on their placement offices. There is a lot of effort put that people's placements, internships, mm -hmm. or uh, even students uh, self-support jobs, in mm -hmm. the universities' ke offices, uh, they try, like in Mary University, mm -hmm. maybe in Portsmouth, maybe, they try to place students uh, in a relevant uh, mm -hmm. job, which they can you know, take something from when they uh, you know, get into the job market. So um, in all, there they are a lot of opportunities if that's the line you're following and if you are trying to take in some experience mm. for, for the future. So Harish, uh, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on the shoulder of uh, career counselors because you know, they are the first part of contact for the students and uh, upon their advice they can decide well, which field they should be opted for. And I think uh, these are the events which are very useful. Uh, like you can study exhibition in which they can meet with the expert counselors directly. So, uh, what do you think uh, that when students should st uh, start their application process so that they are well aware of uh, what are the options and how flexible are career counselors in providing uh, students with the detailed information and uh, what are the uh, you know events and different point of contacts? Uh, be using which they can contact you people. Yeah, I, I suppose it's a long question. Yeah, I'll take that in two parts. I suppose I'll take that in two parts. Um, the first question being in terms of when they when they should start their application. I think I would say that this would go for anyone seeking an undergraduate degree or a postgraduate master's degree in the UK would be the earlier the better. That would be my top tip, um, particularly for undergraduate students um, from Pakistan. Those seeking undergraduate study would be to look at 
preparing their personal statement. We very much, for the majority of the universities here, we don't interview for the majority of our subjects because we have a diverse subject offering. So I think um, getting their personal statement is really key and drafting that. Um, drafting a motivational letter is very different to how you would draft one for US, for the US, particularly in that 70% for UK universities is weighted on the academic engagement in mm -hmm. their subject, which is supported by their extracurricular interest as well. So we really want to see their personality come through, but a genuine interest in the subject because individuals in our universities who are looking at that, they can only decide on the student based on what they write and how well they write and see what their commitment to the subject as well. So that's, I'd say the earlier the better, the, to allow enough preparation for writing a motivational letter. I think um, all of our universities would ask for IELTS to be taken or an English language test provider. So again, taking that within enough preparation so that you meet the standard requirements, which for most of our universities would meet an overall band score of 6.5. So to have that ready, um, and also start building that relationship with their career counsellor in school um, so that they can then work with them to draft their personal statement and ensure they've got that correctly prepared as well. Similarly for a postgraduate course as well, I think the earlier the better because again, particularly for some of the popular courses at some universities, particularly business administration, particularly engineering, particularly computer science or economics, a lot of these courses from across the world, from international students applying to the UK across the world, do tend to be oversubscribed. So one of the main reasons is to apply as early as possible to ensure mm -hmm. your application gets looked at, is assessed. And this is also particularly true for any, any potential student seeking scholarship mm -hmm. study as well. A lot of these um, scholarship um, aid, because a lot of these um, would require admission to the university mm -hmm. first in order to then apply for the scholarship for after. Scholarship. So that's kind of, again, it's kind of really starting kind of a good year in advance, I would mm -hmm. say overall for both, a good year in advance um, overall. For anyone looking at an undergraduate um, course, we would usually typically say to apply by the 15th of January um, of, an, of an annual year using the University College Admissions Service, UCAS, which is the UK portal for admissions, um, because that allows an earlier decision to be received on the student's application. Um, most international students can typically apply up until the end of June, but typically we would usually advise January because it allows them to receive a decision within enough time at, as well. I think in terms of the type of events mm. and kind of engagement with UK universities, that's really ba that's through kind of their attendance and participation through the Study UK exhibition fairs. That is a real useful platform to allow them to meet multiple universities in one setting point, yeah. and getting them to have a more informed choice about what's going to be the right university for them, not just based on the course offering, but also the lifestyle offering as well, particularly this idea versus a campus and city culture mm. as well and where they're located as well, whether that's because there are family already existing in that part of the UK or because of the strength of the course as well. So I think taking advantage of the offerings from the British Council Pakistan, the Study UK exhibitions, and equally any specific university events that are held in country as well, whether that's a seminar, or whether that's meeting one of us one-to-one -one in country, taking advantage of those um, through, kind of through kind of reaching out to us on our website, arranging to meet to us one-to-one, -one. Um, that will help deepen their engagement um, with each university. Right. Thank you, Harish. Uh, LT, I have a question for you, but it's mm -hmm. time for break right now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have official representatives of four UK universities, and there is exciting discussion going on. Now, I'll ask a question from LT about scholarships. What type of scholarships your university offer, and what is the best time to apply for these? Most universities here will have a range of scholarships available. Most of the university provided scholarships will be partial scholarships. Mm. So you may find that they are covering perhaps 25% or 50% of the tuition fee. Some universities will have application processes um, and others will not have application processes. So the University of Glasgow, we automatically assess candidates ba based on their academic merit. Mm. Um, we also have a large numbering number of scholars coming through the Chevening um, and the Commonwealth arrangements as well. And we have um, an arrangement with the HEC, um, as do Edinburgh and probably a number of other universities um, who you've spoken to, um, who we accept students um, th coming through on HEC funding for PhD programmes. Um, so there are a range of scholarships available. And I would echo what Harish was saying earlier about applying early in order to be considered for the widest range of scholarships. It's just you have to secure their admission and then apply for the scholarship. Yes, yes, that's, that's usually the case. But uh, 
what are the criteria on the basis of which scholarship is awarded so that students are prepared in advance that if I apply admission, this is, can they assess that what amount they can get in scholarship? So this will vary between institutions. So I'll speak about the University of Glasgow. Um, our scholarships are all awarded on the basis of academic merit. So for undergraduate students, we are looking for students who are exceeding those minimum entry requirements. Um, and we have a guaranteed £5,000 annual scholarship for those students. Mm. Um, for postgraduate students, we are looking at, at those who are, you know, again, exceeding the minimum requirement, perhaps have a first class honours um, degree, and they would um, be considered for one of our um, larger scholarships um, at postgraduate level. Right. Grace and uh, Hatim, if you could please also speak a little about scholarship uh, from your university's point of view, and then we uh, have an exciting question for all of you. Thank you. Um, well, to echo what's also already been said, um, really one of the most important things is to apply early, both in terms of applying for the course and then making sure that you're not missing any really important scholarship deadlines. And this is true at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. At the University of York, we offer a range of academic excellence mm -hmm. and also vice chancellor scholarships, which are very prestigious and, again, are also based on academic merit. So a student would need to apply for the course, have received an offer, and then they can apply for scholarships. Primarily, we're looking for the best students who are exceeding our minimum entry requirement, but we're also looking for well-rounded students. So in our scholarship application process, we do ask students to talk about any um, hobbies or extracurriculars they undertake as well. Mm. Because for our scholarship awardees, we want to make sure they're going to make the most of the university experience as well. So we want really engaged mm. and committed students. I would also recommend that students check department web pages on university websites, as often departments can sometimes offer their own scholarships that maybe um, are assessed separately from centrally funded and organised scholarships as well. And this is just to make sure that students are as best prepared as they can be um, to access the full range of scholarships available to them. Hatim. Um, for application, uh, best applications to year round mari open hoti hain, but okay. uh, usme advice ye hoti hai because uh, eventually aapko student ko visa process se guzarna hota hai. Mm. Usme advice ye karte hain ki as early as possible, jo last do se teen mahine hote hain, usme kehte hain ki sirf visa ki stage pe student ho, uh, baaki documents, uska cash, letters, sab kuch uh, arranged ho. Uh, scholarship bade important question hai. Um, Hamare Tino cities may have be my experience. Ask by almost every student. Exactly. Pella ni to dusa sawal ge hi hota ke what scholarships do you offer? Um, for my university at Portsmouth, um, hum is wakat jitne bhi Pakistani students apply kar rahe hain, unko offer ke liye qualify karte hu akht, waise hi 10% uh, ka scholarship dete hain. Uh, ye sab ke liye. Iski humne koi specific entry requirement nahi rakhi, except ke aapko offer ke liye qualify karna hai. Uh, जैसे colleagues ने कहा कि इससे ज़्यादा जो scholarships होते हैं वो academic merit की base पे मिलते हैं। So मेरी university भी जो students academic merit जिसके मुताबिक अच्छे grades, अच्छे GPAs, अच्छी standings के साथ आते हैं, उनको हम भी five thousand pounds की scholarship देते हैं। um, एक जो uh, नई इसमें development है वो है कि research की तरफ बहुत university अब काम कर रही है। right. uh, courses में तो at my university हम uh, teaching excellence framework में हमारा gold rank है, which is you know the highest। लेकिन research को अब हम ज़्यादा promote करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं, तो हमारे पास अब Pakistani students जो PhD के लिए आना चाहते हैं, अपना proposal submit करने के बाद, सारा process follow करने के बाद, उनको हम fully funded भी programs दे रहे हैं, right. जिसमें उनकी uh, one to one सारी की सारी costs cover होती हैं। right. तो ये हैं। uh, post study work uh, option has been re-announced actually. Mm -hmm. So what do you think how it is going to change the landscape for international students? Um, the, it, it, it completely changes the uh, perspective from you know the students point of view mm -hmm. because um, uh, that is uh, you know one of the top priorities for a student when he goes to study abroad uh, because um, uh, experience uh, work they get a chance to Yes, I've been an international student I have friends and people in the uh, you know workforce as well who've uh, you know made this a point while choosing which destination they're going to you know uh, choose um, so uh, perspective change hona hai students ke liye because uh, um, uh, isse hi hota hai ki jab student graduate hota hai to uske paas uh, bahut without wasting any time uh, without you know looking searching job hunch mein padhna ye isse bach jata hai student aur jo experience wo leke wapas apne country aate hain 
وہ کمپیریزن میں بہت زیادہ Yeah, I think it's um, the announcement about the reintroduction of post-study work is a really exciting development. But I think it's also important to remember that the picture and the landscape has already been looking very positive in the UK, particularly for international students. Um, the University College Admissions Services, um, UCAS, which processes undergraduate applications, released a report at the end of 2018, which indicated that uh, applications and acceptances from international students outside of the European European Union was the highest on record. So I think the reintroduction of post-study work will already build on that um, improving landscape and picture for um, undergraduate international students. And it's, I think what's really great about the UK university system as well is that most universities in the UK will have some form of career service that will provide advice and guidance to students to think about that next step. And often students and graduates can access that information after they've graduated as well. It's not just a case of whilst you're at the university, we'll help prepare you afterwards. Um, but often universities can provide that advice and guidance later down the line as well. At the University of York, we're really focused on identifying the strengths of our students. So students who enter onto undergraduate programs are automatically entered into a program called York Strengths. They undertake um, an assessment test um, which identifies their key strengths and really helps them build upon those strengths as opposed to just focusing on their weaknesses as well. And universities will also provide lots of opportunities to engage with prospective employers across a range of different sectors through um, careers fairs and being able to meet with um, employers. Um, and that's why it's important to also look for universities that have really strong industry links. Okay, so other things, same in Scotland? Yes, so it's the same. Um, we both have career services. Um, that offer those sorts of opportunities. Post study work option as well? Oh yeah, yeah, that applies. It's the same legislation that applies. Um, so, yeah. Okay, all right. And um, I have an uh, important question for all of you. That is, um, the future of work is changing, and it's rapidly changing, and it's keep on changing. Digitization has a major effect on how we work. You know, uh, now we can even work from home as well. We even don't need to go to office. And even if we go to office, uh, our hours are not being monitored. What is being monitored is the KPI, is the delivery. So how are universities preparing students uh, for the workforce, for the uh, work which is, you know, environment which is ever changing? Starting with Harish. Yeah. So I think um, through online learning, um, that's kind of becoming kind of a bigger increase in terms of kind of online courses, online delivery without stu students kind of taking the advantage of a UK system mm. and all the benefits it brings, um, but kind of really taking that in the home. So at the University of Edinburgh, we've launched kind of a suite of online learning programs known as Distance Learning at Scale. Mm. Um, we've also been launching a couple of micro masters as well, which allows students to gain the same experience and immerse themselves in a course, whether that's in predictive analytics, which is run by a business school, um, or in clinical nursing. Um, it allows them to really enrich and really enhance their existing professional skills in what they're doing already mm. um, and just kind of accredit that and qualify that to kind of um, develop those skills further in what in mm. what they're already doing in the profession. So um, I think the online space um, through kind of distance learning courses and micro masters is, will continue to grow to in, in order to meet the demand, particularly, um, where the, particularly for those um, who don't have the option to really t undertake the full time study overseas um, in the UK university. By studying an online course, it allows them to take the same benefits. I'll take the same question. And how important are the academia and industry linkages you know, in order to uh, make students relevant uh, to the workforce when they graduate? Uh, this is, sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, my question is that uh, th that's the same question, actually. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, could you please uh, you know, uh, also share your thoughts on how important has become the academia and industry linkages? Okay. How it is important uh, for the universities to you know, 
uh, remain in contact with the industry so that they can change their teaching methodologies, uh, mend their curriculum, so okay. that uh, when you send your student and graduate actually into the job market, they stay relevant. Okay, okay. So what I would say to that is um, most programs will be focusing on the transferable skills that they are teaching to the students. Mm. Um, so you might, you know, for example, if you study maths, th these are skills that are relevant to so many different industries. Um, it's not that you will become a mathematician and just study maths for the rest of your life. Um, that can be applied in lots of different ways. Um, similarly, if you study a psychology degree, that can be a very good basis for going into a career in marketing, perhaps, or in human resource management. Um, so you, you should look at the skills um, that, that the program develops within you, and you'll find that these can actually be applied to so many different career paths. I think the figure, if I remember correctly, is about 60% or 70% of graduate roles don't actually specify which degree you need to have. Um, so that tells you quite a lot about, about what the opportunities are out there. The same question. Um, I would totally echo what's already been said. Um, I think what's really important is focusing on those transferable skills as well that um, universities in the UK offer to students, whether they're studying on a programme that's perhaps broader with a major or minor or something with a particular degree specialism. Um, and it's also important to think about the wider university experience as well. It's not just what you study, but the transferable skills you get from the overall student experience in the UK of getting involved with student societies and clubs um, and how that can be applicable to the workplace as well. Um, and that makes students really well rounded and exactly. um, sort of desirable to employers. And another uh, question which I would like to ask you is that uh, there are no uh, jobs right now like you can we can call it uh, if we compare the job openings with the population size of the world you know uh, we need to uh, encourage entrepreneurship we need to so that our graduates uh, can start their own business and they can create jobs for others as well so uh, what do you think how uk universities and, and your education system is fostering entrepreneurship i think it's fostering entrepreneurship um through the uh, um, focus on independent study mm. and the skills that students develop through the mode of study at um, the university and how that can be applicable to um, whichever line of the work they want to go mm. into. Um, and I think the links between universities and um, different industries as well gives students the opportunity to think broader and more openly about what their prospects are um, later down the line as well. So uh, employment or self-employment? What is the future? Okay, uh, quite clearly, the uh, employment has expanded, but the rate of our entrepreneurship and innovation has increased a lot of the rate. Your question is very good. Um, in this regard, some universities have uh, started to start that they have on-campus uh, uh, incubators. Hote mm -hmm. It's also a name. There are offices wo, uh, uh, ya departments established. जहाँ पे इसी प्रैक्टिस को वो स्टिमुलेट करते हैं स्टूडेंट्स को बुलाया जाता है और उनके आइडियाज उनके प्रपोजल्स लिए जाते हैं उनको हेल्प की जाती है बिल्कुल जिस तरह आप अपने पीएचडी में अपना प्रपोजल सबमिट करते हैं सो दे आर इंस्टीट्यूट्स पे डिपार्टमेंट्स जो यूनिवर्सिटीज में स्टूडेंट्स को बुला के उनके प्रपोजल्स लेते हैं आइडियाज के और ऑन बीइंग सक्सेसफुल ऑन बीइंग कंसीडर्ड उनके बिजनेसेस को स्टार्टअप करने में हेल्प करते हैं उनको फंड्स देते हैं दे लिंक देम विद इन्वेस्टर्स जिसी तरह हम हम इंडस्ट्री से आप लिंकेज की बात करें थे यू नो रिफॉर्मिंग द करिकुलम अपडेटिंग द करिकुलम एंड यू नो मेकिंग इट रेलेवेंट टू द वर्कफोर्स इसी तरह वो कोशिश करते हैं कि स्टूडेंट्स के जो आइडियाज हैं स्टार्टअप्स के वो भी इनोवेटिव हों तो यस वी आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी आपकी यूनिवर्सिटी क्या काम कर रही है पाकिस्तान में इन टर्म्स ऑफ पार्टनरशिप्स रिक्रूटमेंट के अलावा जी हमारा लिस्ट है ऑफ फोर फाइव टास्क दैट वी अंडर गोइंग um abhi on me say we've just recently started uh, i'm the first uh, employee uh, in in the region in the in pakistan Best wishes. in the pakistan thank you uh, we do ha we are very active in india and uh, neighboring countries but pakistan mein uh, we have, we've just started um hum uh, jo pehla hamare liye uh, importance hoti hai pakistan mein wo hcc se collaborate karna hota hai uh, mous karne hote hain institutions ke sath research partnerships karni hoti hain uh, academics shadow programs pe jaate hain yahan se uk jaate hain UK and um, uh, in the end we try to make the curriculum 
यू नो कम अप टू द सर्टन लेवल यू नो जो स्टैंडर्ड रिक्वायर्ड होता है उसका एक और फ़ायदा ये होता है कि जब स्टूडेंट्स यहाँ से जॉब या पढ़ाई करके बाहर जाते हैं तो उनको क्रेडिट मिलता है उसका काफ़ी जो क्रेडिट और या रिकग्नीशन और प्राइवेट लर्निंग आते हैं आप ई एल कहते हैं उसको रिकग्नीशन और प्राइवेट लर्निंग उसमें बड़ा हेल्प होता है इफ़ योर करिकुलम इज यू नो इफ इट्स अलॉन्ग द सेम लाइन्स बड़ी फैसिलिटी हो जाती है आपको सो ये एक मल्टी फैसड अप्रोच है हम इसको देख रहे हैं अभी क्रिस वट टाइप ऑफ वर्क यूर यूनिवर्सिटी इज डूइंग इन पाकिस्तान अदर एनी पार्टनरशिप ऑलरेडी टेकन प्लेस Uh, yes, so we have obviously recently attended the British Council Study UK fairs, and they've been very successful. Uh, we also work with some uh, councillors and agents in country as well, who can provide really good um, advice and guidance to students who are thinking about applying to the UK um, and other destinations as well, and to also think about um, how best to prepare their application um, as well. And uh, are you planning for university-to-university university partnerships in Pakistan? Um, that's something that will be handled by our partnerships team, but it's definitely something that they're reviewing year on year, and potentially in the future, um, hopefully there will be um, partnerships between universities. Um, in Nelthia, what type of work here university doing in Pakistan? So we don't have any institution level partnerships okay. um, as such, um, but we do have um, a number of agency partners that we work with here. Um, we do have global connections across the world and this is something that incoming students can really take advantage of. So for example, undergraduate students coming to the university, they don't need to spend the full time at the University of Glasgow, they can choose to spend a year or a semester um, at some other place that, where we have a partnership. Um, so I would encourage students to think about that opportunity and look at the, the options that are there um, with the different universities as we all have different connections across the world. And you have already mentioned earlier that uh, you have linkages with the HEC in terms of scholarships processing. Yes, yes we do. Um, so we accept a number of um, PhD students through to our programs um, on that funding. And that's a great service for the Pakistan because they come back to Pakistan and now they are teaching in, at, at mm. the universities. Right. It was a great initiative of HEC by the way. So Harish, the same question. Yeah, um, similarly to ECHO, so the University of Edinburgh has been active in Pakistan probably the last five to six years, um, mainly as part of the British Council Study UK exhibitions, but we are now starting to look at a partnership drive um, through connecting with institutions in Pakistan, mm -hmm. such as the University of Animal and Veterinary Sciences in Lahore, the National University of Science and Technology in Islamabad, um, just to name a couple of them, where we have actually had existing direct co-collaborations, research publications being produced from our Edinburgh mm -hmm. academics and academics at these institutions, even some of our alumni now working in these institutions. Mm -hmm with our Edinburgh academics. So we are now starting to forge and formalize those links um, overall in the region. Um, for South Asia, it's actually Pakistan, um, which has produced the most research output um, from, inst from institutional collaborations um, that we've identified recently. So there's been over 34 co-collaborations with Edinburgh and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So we will now start to um, try to formalize that. So Harish, what would be your message for the young people of Pakistan? Um, I think, again, it's be ambitious, um, be motivated, be disciplined enough as well. The UK, studying in the UK is very different to studying in, in Pakistan. It's a very different setup. You have to want to want to learn and um, be independent. And I think that can be a very different education system if you're not used to that kind of self kind of motivated learning. So I think once you kind of um, have that drive and that passion um, would be my piece of advice. I'll hear your message for the youth of Pakistan. So I would encourage um, the youth of Pakistan to do your research. Um, there's a lot of options out there um, and it can be quite overwhelming. So do your research in advance um, of, of coming to any of the fairs or meeting any um, agency partners that the universities work with so that you are coming, having an idea of what matters to you and what you're going to prioritise in your decisions. Grace. I think I would advise that students should be confident, um, be confident and ambitious in um, whether they want to study in the UK and to think about their own passions and interests as well, but also to be open-minded when doing that research about the different courses available and to look at courses that they may not have heard of as well, because actually that might instill a new passion in them. Uh, students should uh, work hard again and aim very, very high. Um, market make information deficit hai. Kafi students isliye step nahi le pate because they don't know what to do, how to do, who to ask help from. 
uh, but now there are lots of uh, there's a network of agents. Uh, British Council does a wonderful job. There are, we have other network of you know uh, very good uh, representatives and agents. I myself am based in Pakistan, so please get out there, ask questions, uh, go for it, and make a decision. Atim, Grace, Iltia, Harish, thank you very much for being on my show. Thank you for having uh, me. As in, uh, this is the discussion. We have covered two episodes in the cover of the UK universities. You can go to the UK universities. There are options for subjects. We have UK education system. We have to understand within UK, there are options. I have to say that I learning in Scotland and uh, uh, England Wales. There is a variety of education and diversity. है. And then, what are the scholarships and options? So, we have covered the details in the details. If you have a curious thing, then you have to ask the official representatives of Pakistan. Otherwise, you have to ask the website and contact us. Thank you for being with us. Inshallah, next week, we will talk about the next topic.